Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Larry Benedict. I'm the product manager for Telex Radio Dispatch, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar on the IP3000 series consoles. We have with us today uh, Elizabeth Christensen. She's our marketing communications manager, uh, Greg Campagnon, our sales manager, as well as Hugh Nin, our engineering manager. So the IP3000 series, um, it's a console that's user-friendly. And in this console, we have combined the console, the software, and direct IP interfaces that are optional into single, easy-to-use devices. Um, but we have retained our flexibility that those of you that have used our CSOF software have come to uh, know and love. So these consoles, as you will see, uh, are very flexible for you and fit a lot of needs. This is the first introduction of product as part of our revamp and next generation dispatch uh, program. We've simplified the management of consoles. Uh, uh, as you know, with say our previous C6200, IP2002 series, IP1616, you know, there was a lot of setup that was had to be done right there on the console. And we've actually simplified that and brought that all uh, into uh, CSoft as well as Telex System Manager. So there's a lot less uh, configuring that has to be done right on the console itself. And then we've integrated the ability to bridge systems. So once again, you know, we, we've heard from the customer base that they would like to be able to get into more of the direct IP systems such as Kenwood's Next Edge. P25, et cetera. And so we've taken all those interfaces that we developed under CSoft and we've brought them into a hardware platform. So there's two form factors, the IP3002 and the IP3008. And then there's a large form factor, which is the IP3018. The IP3002 and 3008 were developed it's one one piece of, of hardware, but it's a slightly different software load that goes on these devices. Um, the IP3002 was really meant to replace the IP2002. The IP3008 is an eight line unit meant to replace the IP1616. And you can actually get this in a, in a few different varieties. You can get the standard console, which just speaks Telex radio over IPs for talking to things like the IP224, IP223, as well as you can get an enterprise version, which integrates additional direct IP interfaces, more targeted toward the enterprise market, and then a public safety version that integrates the, the P25 with it. The IP3018 is an 18 line unit, so that replaces the C6200. And once again, you can get it in a standard version, enterprise or public safety. So this is kind of the breakdown for you of the IP3002, 3008, and 3018, which models are available, how many lines. Notice that, that all the different models come with two lines of SIP built in. On the enhanced uh, versions, the, the enterprise and public safety, you do have access to per line call playback, as well as various interfaces. Now, if you note there, on the standard versions of the 3008 and the 3018, you are able to upgrade this to a, an enterprise or a public safety version. The incline option, allows consoles to be inclined. It's an optional adjustable mount. It'll work on any of the models. And then you have an extended keyboard version that can be added to the side of a unit to give you a, additional programmable keys uh, for quick launching of, of various functions. And these keys are programmable underneath CSoft.
some additional accessories, and I may jump back previously on the slide, I don't know here yet. Um, we have a replacement uh, power supply because it does use uh, external power supplies. We know those sometimes get lost, so we do have them available. Uh, handsets, uh, in the unforeseen event that uh, you, you, you know, lose a unfortunate event that you lose a, a, a handset uh, or it becomes damaged, we do have those available uh, as well. And then we have key sets. Now these key sets are single and double keys. Um, you get a couple of double keys and eight single keys with a key removal tool that allow you to change out and color code keys. There's also clear key covers that go over these and we have a template that you can use to actually create labels for these keys. So for instance, the programmable keys that are along the bottom of the main units, as well as that extended keyboard I just showed you, those can all have the keys replaced. And so you can very quickly color code your functions if necessary. So here's a typical deployment. And here we even show a legacy IP223 setting out in the system, as well as our core gateway is for CSSI, um, NXDN, DFSI base station repeaters, et cetera. Uh, and all you have to do is, is you know, hook your IP3018 or 3002, 3008 into the system, just like you would anything else over IP. Of course, you have to program it up, but it has access to everything in the system if if you program the unit to do that. So what do you actually have to do to get a unit to work? Well, it's pretty easy. You pull it out of the box, you set it up, uh, plug everything in, and it'll initially power up and come to a, a main dispatch screen. And if you will remove the handset from the unit and hold in the star and pound keys on the keypad, it'll actually bring up a hardware configuration screen where you can look at things like the model, you know, the license position name, serial number, et cetera. And you notice there's on sc touch screen buttons on the screen labeled hardware, software, network, tools, power, and about. And so once you go into network, you can set up your network and you can either configure it to be DHCP or you can go to a static IP and you just use the keypad that pops up on the screen to enter all these settings. Choose between IPv4, IPv6, and then save it off. In the tools mode, you can come in and you get access to some additional stuff. You can restart the console application um, there's a disk cleanup tool. You can reset your login credentials and you can do a touch screen calibration. Now the units come out of the box and I would say that you shouldn't have an issue, but if you were to have some kind of issue, maybe it doesn't like your finger or whatever, you could go in to this tools menu and do a touch screen calibration. And in fact, our manual, we actually recommend you just go in and do it. Um, just as a, a course of, of setting the unit up just to make sure everything's perfect. So how do you actually program the unit for real? Well, you don't have a bunch of cumbersome little menus to have to pop through. We actually released a new version of Telex System Manager. And in this new version of Telex System Manager, you will be able to go in and set these units up. We have a new type of firmware file called a TRI file. And this is what allows you to upgrade the firmware in the unit. So just like an IP224 or ADHB4, you can load firmware into these units. You can set and remotely design the file and upload changes to consoles. So you could be 50, 100 miles away from where these consoles are. And assuming you have the connectivity over the network, you can do it right from your desk. In addition to that, we've upgraded CSoft Designer and now we support a new file type called TDA. And these TDA files contain what was the traditional VEG file and all of the MP3, the JPEGs, the BMP, uh, picture files, et cetera, into one single design file. 
And what this will allow you to do is push a complete design to a unit. Now the unit comes with a design already loaded. And that may well work for a lot of people. Once you go into Telex System Manager, you can actually see specific information about the units. You can uh, set passwords and, and things of, of that nature. But more importantly, you can go into this design tab and actually pull that TDA file out of the unit and launch CSoft Designer. And once you do, then you can go in and you can actually set up that file. We've added a, a menu called configure with device and global key mapping uh, underneath it. So now you can actually select what is your target device. Are you designing for a 3002 or 3008 or are you designing for 3018 or are you designing for desktop software? So that's, that's one new menu within Seasoft. And what that does is that changes your real estate size so you know exactly how much real estate you have to play with on that screen. In addition, you can go into global key mapping. You can actually map those hot keys, those macro keys that are built into the unit as well as on an extended keyboard um, to functions within the software. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. And once you've done all that, you've gone and set up your you know, global entries, et cetera, um, you send that file back into the system, send it back to the unit. Now, if you didn't like the stock standard file that was created for you, uh, that shipped with the unit, you can come up with your own design. You can maybe even existing design and modify it for the screen size and send that in instead. So now I'd like to open it up to any kind of questions people might have. Thanks, Larry. That was a good overview of the new consoles. We have, um, we, we've got a bunch of questions here. And on behalf of everyone here at Bosch, guys, I want to thank you all for, for joining. We have a very big group here, great questions. And we know everyone's time is very uh, sensitive, so we want to keep it to the, ha to the half hour. So. Let's go through some of these questions here. We have um, our engineer uh, on the line here. We have uh, Larry Benedict. And um, let's see if uh, we can get through some of these. So first question, the C6200 had the capability to hardware directly for wire to it. How do you replace that functionality? I can take that question. Can everybody hear me? Yes, you. We hey. can hear you. Uh, so the C6200 is an IP and analog console, um, but uh, but for for the new console that we have here is an IP console only. So in order for you to replace in the, the 6200, you need to also add in uh, IP224 into your system as well, so it can uh, interface with that. One of the diagram that uh, Larry showed to you that have an IP224, IP223 connect to it. And that is how you would address the uh, 6200 replacement if you have an analog mode, use analog mode. So if you like to that up on the screen for you. Great, thanks, Hugh. Yep, all right. Yeah, this is the screen. So if you have analog tone mode, Anything like that, you can you can continue to use your IP223 or you use IP224 in tone mode, and you can connect with our uh, IP3000 series. Second question we have up. So if I understand correctly, the 3002 cannot connect directly to a Next Edge system. Do we still have to use an IP224? So, um, correct, you know, IP2002, uh, the intention for it to be a, a, you know, a direct replacement for IP2002, uh, IP we, it's a, in a standard version, we don't support any uh, wireline interface. So if you want to 
connect to P25 system or a Next.js system, um, we do support that using uh, using IP224 via control station. Okay. Question number three on the docket here. Will the new consoles work with a system running CSOF 6.2 with regards to cross muting, et cetera? The, the underlying the Telex protocol, I mean, we still continue to support that. So cross mute and everything will con we will continue to support it still work together. Uh, but, you know, we advise people for future compatibility because we will continue to roll out. This is just one of the series of products that we roll out for the next generation of Telex Radio Dispatch. We advise uh, people to stay updated with uh, the latest CSOP. So we can, so you can utilize, you know, the new feature that we'll have coming down the pipe here in the next uh, 18 months. And I, I want to add to that, uh, the next generation software that we are developing, um, there's a whole slew of products that we'll be releasing in probably the next two years time. And we've worked very right. diligently as we're developing these to bring you along on this journey so that we can have the most backward compatibility possible. However, as Hugh points out, you really need to stay as up to date as possible on the software in order to minimize any potential incompatibilities because it's just virtually impossible for us to test with every version of software going back years and years. Great. The um, the next question: Can you edit the veg files in a PC? Yes, that is the intention. So, Larry, you want to go back to the one of the TSM slide. Um, so, so you most of you are already familiar with the Telex System Manager, right? How we use. Okay, right, right. That this slide. Just go back one, Larry. Yeah, so here where you pull the file in through Telex System Manager. Yeah, so as you can see on here, um, you can pull in or you can use your existing uh, VEG file in the CSAP Designer. You will now you have an, op uh, an option to uh, export the VEG file to become a TDA file. So you can either using your, your existing VEG file and convert it to TDA or you can pull straight from uh, from the from the IP three thousand series console, and once you read in the console, you go into right here. There's an edit design. Uh, then it will when you hit that button, it C soft designer will automatically pop up, and you will see the exact design that you have in your console. From there, you will be able to perform all the function that in the designer. You know, edit uh, the, the button or uh, adding but button to it. You know, adding graphic to it and, or program uh, the key that, that you would like to use for quick and easy access. And after you do that, you hit the save button and you come back here and then uh, you hit the record button. So it's the red button up here to record uh, the, t the new TDA file to the console. So it makes the, you know, this is one of the things that our engineering team working very hard. Uh, uh, to uh, to to achieve in this design in the in this console, uh, we want to make sure it is uh, very simple, very easy uh, for the system administrator to uh, uh, to make change in the design and to be able to do that remotely. Uh, unlike the older version of CSOP, you know, you edit and you have to send an email or people have to deploy it or you have to be right on the console to do the chain. This we can, you know, pull using TSM that you're already familiar uh, in, in existing system uh, with the new uh, version, pull that in, make a chain in the designer and then push it back in. One of the nice thing about this too, now when you, be, when you install Telex System Manager, we also packaging in the the latest version of, of uh, CSOP designer as well. So you just install one package, 
and then you're ready to go to support your IP3000 series. You don't even need to have CSAP uh, runtime at all. So everything uh, in, in one place, yes. And, and I have to add that, that Hugh's team sent me uh, early on when we were doing the, the prototype testing, they actually sent me units with just a very minor amount of documentation. I, I am, as the product manager, yes, I am knowledgeable about the product line and, and the software, but I don't use it day to day. And I was able to figure out how to do most things without ever looking in a manual. So um, it passes uh, the casual, casual user test in terms of, of ease of use and figuring it out just from the software. Yeah, we have, we have many uh, versions of software based on the user uh, feedback from user from beta testing, and this is one of the functions that they love the most. You know, they said, "Wow, this is sweet. Uh, how you be able to, to, you know, to package all the necessary component in the design uh, file into a new TDA format called Telec Design Archive. You package everything together and be able to push out to to individual console. That is the uh, I." My, our hope is, is you will enjoy, you will like this uh, functionality and uh, add it carry on to the new product as well. The new version of yep. CSAP 7 is ready. It lay out the back, the, um, the foundation for next version of product or uh, future product that will support, that we'll have, uh, we'll announce in the future to you. Great. A couple more here. Um, I think we touched on this. Are the new consoles compatible with the old IP223 and do you get audio playback on the 3002? Yes. Yes, the old console uh, is compatible because as I, we indicated earlier, we still use, uh, we still continue to support the Telex Radio over IP protocol. So it's all compatible uh, to an extent. Uh, we, of course, we, we never be able to test all the different version of of of, uh, of uh, IP224 or IP223 uh, firmware, but we will support up to the latest stuff that we have on our website right now. Um, so 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 that that uh, that what we, we we that is our intention. What is the second? I'm I forgot. They were asking about audio playback, you. Oh, the audio which, playback. Yes, you, 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 get audio, you get audio back through speakers that are built in. Yeah. Um, that's my fault. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, there's um, a Polite Co playback that we support uh, for, for the product as well. Um, can the consoles be connected to cell phones with push to talk? Hmm. Um, Larry, you want to handle this question? Yeah, so so ptt over cellular is a bigger thing that's that's about protocols um in that are being developed uh so you have your es chats your zellos etc and longer term we will be providing interfaces out through our console management system that's still under development um, to some of these popular ptt over cellular applications we also will have uh, soon to be released a PTT over cellular application that will be compatible with these of our own um, that, will, that will allow you to, to deploy uh, a server with software on, on phones to create PTT over cellular and bring that into the system as well. Great. Let, okay, let's take one, one other thing that I want to add here. Um, maybe if you want to contact your cell team, and then later on this year we will open up the beta test plan for for PTT over cellular. So maybe something that that you can help us uh, collaborate with us doing our product development and get your input into into the new product. Yes. So contact. And that is team. that that is a really good idea, Hugh. So we are looking for beta users. Thanks, guys. Let, let's take two more questions where I'm keeping an eye on the time here. We'll take two more questions, guys. And if we didn't get to your question, we have your email. We uh, will filter all of the questions and then respond to your email directly 
after the session this afternoon. But we have two more here. We'll try these. Can I connect a foot switch and headsets like we do with the ADHB4 to the consoles? So for the for the larger console, uh, IP2018, uh, we do have uh, an input uh, to the back of the console uh, that will be able, uh, we will support the foot switch. However, if you want to do the headset, then our recommendation is to use the uh, ADHB4 connector for the, for the headset. Okay, and the last yeah, Hugh, I, I believe I believe one of our testers did connect a USB headset in, um, but it doesn't support uh, PTT off the headset. You still have to PTT off the console. Yeah. So that scenario, yeah, we I, I don't want to mention that because we haven't tested yet. So um, yeah, but definitely um, one way to do it, you know, the reliability. The way to do it using our HP4 connect to it. Yep. Okay, and we'll take one more question here. Is CSSI support built in, or do we need another server for CSSI? So right now, uh, the current implementation on this platform is uh, is the support CSSI is built in but you will have to utilize one CSSI connection to your infrastructure. Um, later on, uh, within, I hope within 18 months, we'll have the product, new product, uh, phase two of uh, console management system. That's where it will handle all the CSSI connection and this console here will connect to it and it will support, uh, will, you will not need the, CSSI connection for each of the console. So, yeah, we do have the plan uh, to support CSSI um, in the future for, um, with, you know, with one CSSI connection, but right now uh, we just, uh, each console will need to use one CSSI connection. And I, I saw I saw a question that came in, Greg, I want to address right now, which is somebody asked about uh, the operating system. As you can see on the screen, the operating system is a version of Windows 10. It, it's actually for Internet of, of Things. Um, these units run in what's known as kiosk mode. However, we do have an administrator's guide that will allow uh, technicians and IT personnel to be able to gain access into the unit. Uh, to get at traditional Windows functions so that they can implement whatever security that they need or um, make certain changes that, that are, are necessary for deployment in their organization. Right. Yep. Okay, great. We got, we got through probably half the questions. Again, if we didn't get to your question, uh, we have your email. We, we will filter through them and get back to you. Um, the units uh, for pricing and availability, contact your local sales uh, district manager. The guys, the guys are actually on their way back from APCO. Uh, they've been down at the show all week and they'll be back this evening and tomorrow. Um, we can get you pricing, availability and all that good stuff uh, with the sales managers. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention is we do have uh, other sessions tomorrow that complete the uh, Power of Communication webinar series here in 2021. And if you guys would like to see what else is out there that we're offering with Bosch Communication Systems, please feel free to, to join those sessions tomorrow. And everything that, everything that we've done this week for the webinar series, we have recorded. So we will have those up online, including this session here, if you wanna go back and look at it. But on and behalf of- attention. Oh, sorry, Greg. No, that's okay. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, pay, pay attention to our newsletter and website. We, we expected the coming month or two to have uh, some tutorial videos up on uh, setting these consoles up. And, and you know, so that uh, makes it a little, little less uh, daunting uh, for someone when they're looking at it. But it, it's really, it's, it's straightforward. When you see the videos, when they're up posted, you're gonna go, oh, well, okay, that's easy.
Great. Th thanks, Hugh. Thanks, Larry. And on behalf thank of you. everyone here at Bosch, we want to thank you all for stopping in. And um, if you did uh, want someone else to take a look at it, we will have this up and you, and you can download it and rewatch it. Really excited for this new product line in uh, Telex Dispatch Systems. And we look forward to seeing you out in the field soon. Thanks again for stopping by. Thanks, Thanks. Hugh. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.